Well, shalom, shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this Sabbath day. We got a double Sabbath. Not only it is the Sabbath, it is also the Passover. And we say shalom, shalom to you all who are joining us today to do a study with us, which is beautiful. It is a beautiful Passover afternoon, and we look forward to uh, the, a beautiful class. We welcome you, those that are in the, in the listening audience, the Internet, on YouTube. We thank you all for joining us today. You're coming into a session that has already been in progress, and we're, we're talking about some things, and we, we want to continue our conversation. So uh, please feel free to listen in and, and try to join us sometime, uh, if you can, on Saturday. We would love to have you. But since you're absolutely right, that is exactly right, they are making sure you know, that their resources are taken care of and covered. Because they, that, that's what, and you know what, when you look at these people, these are all the people that have conspired together to make sure that we stay on the bottom. There it is. It is. That's right. It is. Yeah, as know? long as they don't mention us, then, then, then they, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Out of mind. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> no question about that there right there whatsoever. But you know what, one thing we know of, whether they accept us as being the Jew, the Israelites or not, the ancient, now they call us the ancient Israelites. They say, oh, the ancient Israelites used to do it like this, or the ancient Israelites used to do it like that. No, we, don't, we haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> We're still around. I love that play you made. And now there's one um, rabbi, his name is Karn, I believe. He has really dark, curly hair. And for the longest time, he's been saying the ancient Israelites. And I've said, why don't they ask then who are their descendants today? Right, exactly. They don't want. They ain't gonna do it. They're not gonna do it because they don't want that. They don't want that to come out. They're not gonna do it. So, you know, we just have to do what it is we do, and we have to let it. You know, we have to let the Most High do what He's gonna do because He's running this thing. If, if you don't know it by now. You, we gonna have to sit you to the side and find out what's going on, cause he is truly running this thing. And guess what? He has his people sitting in the background watching all of this stuff happen, and we're getting excited about things that other men are worried about. And he's talking about it's gonna be millions of people that's gonna die. Millions of uh, millions of our ancestors was murdered and killed. That is correct. But nobody that's concerned right. about that. Not at all. I can't. Mm -mm. You're absolutely correct. And they're going to bring it up again, 2019, how they enslaved us. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it's, it's like I said, it's, it's important now. It's a moral issue now because now it's dealing with people that are over in the Middle East, and now everybody wants peace. There ain't going to be no peace. It's going to be a war. And when the most high come, it's really going to be a war. There ain't going to be no peace. Yeah, the, Almighty said, the Almighty said that he was going to Captain the people that held us captive. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Asher, I mean, Assyria was one of those folks that yes, kept was. us captive. Yes. And they probably yes, still yes, doing yes. it today. That's what I heard. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe You know, that. now all of a sudden those were the first two uh, 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 ancient Christians in the day. That has absolutely nothing to do with nothing. It's going to be the most high word is not going to come back void under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so many bodies. It said we're going to be stepping over bodies when he comes. I just don't want mine to be in the number. I want to be among the living. <laughs> oh, that's right. Real. <laughs> I want to be among the living. I do not want to be among the dead. I really don't. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. I have, and guess what? Guess what the topic is today? The ceremonial laws. We have to go over the high holy days. And what a better day to have it than today. It's just, just a beautiful thing. I mean, the most high is on point. Yeah, I wanted, to mention, I wanted to mention to you all that... Um, the uh the 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 um the high holy day supersedes the regular Shabbat when it falls on Shabbat. Yes, it does. That's right. Absolutely. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Beautiful day. Beautiful. We got so much to show you. Oh my goodness, grace is alive. I know y'all gonna be like, Diana. I am so tired of of 
of, let me stop this right now. I am so tired of the, um, uh, I think the, uh, the, the Passover information. Oh, my goodness, I'm so tired of it. But i got to go into it, and as we go into the Passover, we're going to understand why, what happened, who did what, what was the reasoning behind y'all. We know we're doing it because we're doing it today. So we know we did it ceremonially. We did it as a memorial last night. It was very, very nice. I enjoyed everyone that was there. And uh, uh, we are just excited that you all are here. So, you know, I, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. For those it was the first time, can you see the screen? Okay. Yeah. And we're going to be going through the Bible, so don't worry about you all who cannot see the screen. As long as you have your Bible, you're good. We're good. Appointed for Israel, it says the feast days are God's appointed time for his people. Hallelujah. It says seven major feast days. He said there are seven major feast festivals of the Old Testament Israel where in calendar order it is Passover, it is unleavened bread, it is first fruits, it is feast of weeks, which some people say Passover. Pentecost, it is the Feast of Trumpet, it is the Day of Atonement, and it is Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles. Those are the high holy days that the Most High has in the Scriptures. Any questions? I only got three, y'all. You only got three? Say again? Oh, maybe she was talking to someone else. I didn't hear. I can go over it again. Passover, one. Unleavened bread, two. Feast of first fruit, three. Feast of weeks, four, which some people call Pente- Pentecost. Feast of trumpets, five. Day of atonement, six. Feast of tabernacle or feast of booths is seven. Now, there are other days that Israel worship, and we're going to get into those days. Some of them were set up by the Maccabees and, and different things. We will get into those days, but we're going to deal with these first. All right, it says, after the exile, the Jews added memorial days for the fall of Jerusalem, Purim, and the Feast of Dedication, which some people call Hanukkah. It says, in addition, the Israelites observe the Sabbath every week and the Feast of New Moon every lunar month. These are something that we did. This is something we do. This is a part of our culture. So guess what? We didn't know nothing about uh, the holidays when we came here, but as they began to bring in their holidays, we began to worship their holidays instead of the high holidays. All right, Passover. It says the Passover, this is a memorial day. It is not one of the annual Sabbaths, as work is not permitted. Leviticus 23 and 5, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Passover. What is today's date? The day is the 15th day. 14th. 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 Fourteen. We are still in the Passover according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Here. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 verse 5. And this is what it says. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Most High Passover. Now we're going to Exodus 12. We're not going to read the whole chapter because I've been reading this chapter for like three days. But I have to pull out some things. Very important, and we're going to stop and ask questions and different things like that. So if you have any questions, just write them down until we stop. All right, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And the Most High spake unto Moshe and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It That's shall be the first one. month of the year to you. Oh, verse 1. Verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 3. Ye shall speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according 
to the house of their fathers a lamb for an ounce. So on the tenth day, they would gather a lamb together, but like the Most High said, and they would keep it. And in the verse 4, And if the household be too, too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Any questions? None? Okay, go. Verse 6, it says, Ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole congregation the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So you had to kill it in the evening on the 14th day of the month. At even. They shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein ye shall eat it. It's very important that we understand that they did this in their houses. Watch, here we go. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Now we did this last night. We had we did now some everybody couldn't do lamb. I understand that we did it as a memorial, you know, and, and we had the bitter herbs and we had the meat representing the lamb, and we had the unleavened bread, we had the, um, the matzah cracker, uh, and all that kind of stuff, and we did that last night. And we all know. We did, have, we did do that, and that, we did it in our houses, and we ate together last night. It is very important that when you do it next year, if you did not eat with us, you have to eat together. Okay, here we go. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning, and that which remaineth of it until morning, ye shall burn it. Watch. And it said, this is verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Most High's Passover. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Most High. Who are the gods of Egypt? Somebody tell me that, because he said, and against all the gods. That's all of it. Soft and raw and all. And that's the one that came all down the raw and, and all them, and I'm moon and all. He said, against all the gods of Egypt. Well, I like execute judgment. After all. All of them. Yep. This man, all of them. He said, I'm coming after all of them. Watch. He said, 13, and the blood shall be to you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, oh, do the church mess with that. When they say, I see the blood, I'm going to cross over. Mm -hmm. And I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, when I smite the land of Egypt. So the Most High wasn't coming for peace. He was coming to, 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 to murder some folks. He came to kill some, some of the, the Egyptians. What is, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. It was a very solemn night. It was something, I mean, to hear the screams oh, yeah. and the hollers and the, and the, oh, my baby is dead. Oh, God, yeah. somebody help me. My child is, he ain't breathing. My wife is there. It was a, it was a very it was a very emotional night. You know, he said in verse fourteen, he said, "And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast 
to the Most High throughout your generations, and ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So not only is it a memorial, but it is an ordinance, something we got to keep. 23, here we are, we in, uh, we're in Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. For the Most High will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he see the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Most High will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Verse 24. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Verse 25. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Most High will give you according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service. 26. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? 27. That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Most High Passover, who pass over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the, the 28, verse 28, And the children of Israel went away and did as the Most High had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so did they. And 29, And it came to pass that at midnight, the Most High smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn, uh, uh, I'm sorry, unto the firstborn of the captives that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. So if you was in jail and you was the firstborn and you was of the other nations or you was of another of, an, of another nation and you was the firstborn in the jail of Pharaoh, you died. Well. <clears throat> that was a lot of... Can you imagine a whole nation? A firstborn of every nation, everybody in the United States of America. Do you know how many dead bodies that was? Mm -hmm. What's the significance of the firstborn? Oh, we get we going there, my friend. Just hold on. We're on our way. <laughs> We're definitely on our way, I promise you. The firstborn of every household that wasn't that wasn't Israel, that didn't have the blood on the doorpost, died. All the evangelical Christians that didn't believe that we was the Israelites, I'm just using them as an example, that didn't believe it was necessary to do that, didn't put the blood over the doorpost, guess what? They died. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, well, no, well, wasn't no speaking in tongues. It wasn't no praying. It wasn't no none of that. Either you followed the instructions that was given, and they were only given to the Israelites. <laughs> Watch. And somebody said, why did this happen? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Perfect question at a perfect time. Watch. Murdering the Hebrew boys. Pharaoh had murdered all the infant Hebrew boys by drowning them in the Nile. This is Exodus chapter 1, verse 22. Egypt had grown rich by enslaving the Hebrew people for years. Don't that sound familiar today? <clears throat> you ain't they murdering our boys. They just say infants, but ain't they murdering our boys? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. shoot them down in the street mm -hmm. like there's nothing in it. Yeah. And then, didn't we make them rich when we was in slavery? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He said, while Pharaoh carried out this plot, the Egyptian people benefited from his decision to enslave the Jews. They call it consumerism now. Capitalism. That's a nice name. That's a nice name. <laughs> they done cleaned it up, sis. They call it capitalism. They got, they got Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? The bull on Wall Street. They done cleaned it up now. But without us, that couldn't have never happened. It wouldn't have never happened. Why? Now, the Egyptian people were being held culpable 
for standing idly by while this was happening. Why? Yah had promised to curse those who curse Israel. If Yah did not act, he would have been reneging on his promise to Abraham. He told him, I'm going to get them back. You don't even have to worry about that. That's a given. That's coming. Hmm. I'm going to pay them back for all the things that they did. And Brother, Brother Donia, how long was it before when the first baby was thrown into the Nile up until when the payback came? <laughs> Is he still with us? He might have been cut off. It was 80 years later. 80 years. 80 years. So the most I don't forget. Mm. They killed our boys, but guess what? He killed everything that was firstborn. Mm. And some of Israel died too. That's right, for disobedience. Mm -hmm. They was being disobedient. You know how it is, sis, when you got that hard-headed husband that ain't listening? Ain't nobody going to listen to uh, uh, Moshe. We going to eat this animal in the morning. We ain't killing no animal. That's right. They were hollering like, we ain't putting that bread on our door either. That's right. Why put no bread on the door, folks? What was the purpose of that? That, that next morning, if you was the first born, you was dead. See, I'd have had to leave him. I'd been like, well, I'm going next door to the neighbor's house, so you have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't dying with you. I have a choice, and I'm going to make my own choice because I ain't going to die with you. Mm -mm. No, sir, not me. I know Don't even give it a second thought. You want to be ego tripping and you want to have some pride jumping off, you'll be over here by yourself. Me and my children leaving. And so that, and that might have been a decision that the law had to make too, you know? Yeah, they're going to make it, said. You know what? Yeah. You just said a mouthful. They're going to make it in a minute. That's, That's a right. decision got, everybody you know, getting ready to make in a minute. That's right. I mean, when we get ready to leave. You're going to have to look at dude and say, hey, baby, I love you, but I got to go. I, know. I mean, I know too much. I've been trying to tell you for the longest. Hopefully, the most high open up your eyes when the time comes. But I got to go. I'm not staying here. I got to go. That's right, because you got to shave your chef and nobody else. Now, hello? You better say that again. <laughs> That's when you have a serious conversation and you look him in the eye or her in the eye and say, baby, I love you. You know, I've loved you my whole life. We've been married. We've been together for a long time. But this is where we part ways. All right. <laughs> it's going to be tough, ain't it? It's going to be a tough situation. It's going to hurt. But you just get, guess yeah. what? At some point, you got to trust in the Most High God. You got to trust him. <clears throat> that guess what? That he's going to do what's right by those who you love, and that he'll open up their eyes and bring them at the appointed time. The appointed time. Because you can't stay back hoping they're going to open up their eyes. You might stay back and you get killed and they leave. Because <laughs> you know better. No, I, I ain't going to be able to do it. I mean, you know, I'm not me. Nope. All right, here we go. It says, Pharaoh killed every human infant boy. God only judged the firstborn of Egypt. God's judgment was mild in comparison to, to Pharaoh's judgment. Because he could have wiped them all out, but guess what? It really wasn't even in the end, because when we get to the end of this thing right here, you're going to realize he wasn't playing. The most I don't play when it comes to his people. All right. Verse 41, it said, And it came to pass at the end of 40, we still in Exodus chapter 12, and it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the self-same day, it came to pass that all the host of the Most High went out from the land of Egypt. Who is the host? Israel. Who is the host? That's his angels. Those is his angels. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The angels left. I know the angel show. We're about to get up out of here. We're about to get up. It was going to get hot up in there. It got hot. 
Yes, indeed. The host left. <laughs> and yeah, so wherever Israel is, the host is. And my girl, you ain't got to pick up a stick in this land. You don't have to touch them people. You leave them people alone. Because guess what? The most high know what he's doing. When the time comes, it's going to be ugly. Watch, here we go. And the most high said unto Moshe and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So then guess what, Do Guess what that means? Does that mean that the Gentile can celebrate the Passover? Hmm. Watch. But every man's servant that is brought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. 46, we still in Exodus chapter 12. In one house shall it be eaten. Uh oh, there go that house again. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. The original instructions also directed the Israelites to keep the Passover in individual homes rather than at the tabernacle or temple to catch the blood of the land in the basin and smear it on the doorpost and the lintel of the house. So the fact that we did it in our houses yesterday was the way that that door, last night was the way that the Most High wanted us to do it in the house. And the technology that we have now allows us to do it together in the house. Any questions? Forty eight. Don't some of those camps give a um, a big to do, like you know, a big party for the Passover? They do. They do. They do. I know most of them do it that way. They do. They do. They have big party. They have big dinners and all. They do. Mm-hmm. Forty eight. And when a stranger shall short join with thee and will keep the Passover of the Most High, let all his males be circumcised. So if you're not circumcised, you cannot partake in the Passover. You cannot do it. And then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. I know there's, you know, for the brothers, there's some brothers on the line they have gone and had this procedure done because they wanted to be in right standing. And for you all, you brothers that know brothers that have not been done that way, they have to be done that way. Watch. For one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourn among you. So what that means is they can't come in and decide, oh, I'm just not going to keep it. If they dwell with us, they have to keep the same law we keep. They can't be isolated and stand apart like, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to. No, you have to participate. You have to do the same thing we do. All right. Here we go. Any questions at all whatsoever? No, no questions. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep on going. All right, we're going to, let's see, we're going to Numbers chapter 9. 9, 1 through 6. Now we get ready to get into the next feast day. Numbers chapter 9. Numbers chapter 9. And the Most High spake on, verse 1, And the Most High spake unto Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. So we know the first year they, were, they had already kept it because they had come out of Egypt. This is the second year. Watch. He said, in the 14th day of, of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season. So we kept it last night in the even. We kept it in our houses. Of course, they didn't have houses at that point. They were dwelling in tents. 
but they still was able to keep the Passover. Why? According to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, ye shall keep it. <clears throat> verse 2, verse 4. We're in Numbers chapter 9, verse 4. And Moshe spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. What do that tell you guys about us? When we get to the wilderness, what are we going to be doing? We're going to keep the feast days. That's right. Yeah. We're going to keep them. We're not exempt. It's not going to stop. We're going to keep them. Why? According to all that the Most High commanded Moshe, Moshe so did the children of Israel. Oh, Verse yeah. And there were certain men who were defiled by dead body, by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. They came before Moshe and before Aaron on that day, and they were not able to keep the Passover because they were defiled by a dead body. So they had to sit it out. They couldn't keep it. Now we can ready to move into the feast that we're about to move into. In, in, in a few minutes. We're going into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. <laughs> this is what we're doing now. We do Passover first, and then the next day we do the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and then we do that for seven days. Any questions before we move on? So we know we have to keep it in our houses. We have to keep it at even. If the house is too small, you can come, you can go into your neighbor's house, and you can do it with your neighbor. You have to be circumcised in order to keep it. A foreigner or a stranger just passing through cannot keep the Passover. They can't do it. These are the things that we suppose is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Here we go. It says the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a feast that is generally mistaken for Passover. Passover, how only, however, is only 24 hour period while the Feast of, uh, of Unleavened Bread lasts for seven days. Now, it's only a 24-hour period because we are in this captivity. Once we go back to our, the regular count of how we count time and how our days are, it will be different. But while we're in this captivity, when we go according to the calendar that we are under, we do it according to that calendar. Watch. Sunset initiates the first day of the Feast of unleavened bread. Nisan 15 was a high day on non-Saturday Sabbath. Baked bread without yeast was eaten during seven days of the feast. Watch, we're in Leviticus chapter 23. This is where all of the feast days are. It's in Leviticus chapter 23 and in other chapters as well. It says, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Most High's Passover. On the 15th day, verse 6, of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Most High. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Now let me tell you what I usually do. This is just me. You can do it the way you want. I usually buy a box of matzo crackers. And I will carry them with me at work. And I will eat on a piece of matzo cracker. I try to only eat one cracker for the whole seven days. It don't mean you got to eat, you know, or you, you, you can choose how much of it you want to eat. But you have to eat unleavened bread for seven days. Any questions? All right, here we go. Verse 7. Do, and do no serve our work. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. And ye shall do no servile work therein. That means we come together. That's why we're coming back together, and we're going to uh, uh, blow the shofar and initiate that we're coming together as a holy convocation to start this one off as well. Okay? Verse 8. Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High seven days, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. So on the seventh day, we come back together. That's why we have it set up, so that we come back together again on the seventh day to end the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Here we 
we go. Now, here we go. This is uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verses 14 through 20. Watch what it says, a memorial. He said, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Most High. Throughout your generations ye shall keep it as a feast by an ordinance forever. Verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So we already did that. Some people did it before we even started the Passover. They got rid of it. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Verse 16. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. So you can prepare your meals. You want everybody to understand that you can eat regular stuff because I remember one of the little brothers was hungry. He was like, I didn't know what to eat. I you can eat regular food. You just can't eat any bread or anything with leaven in it of any kind at all whatsoever. So this would be seven days that you'll go clean without any bread or anything. Verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought you your armies out of the land of Egypt. So they came out on the on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread. Watch. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generation by an ordinance forever. Verse eighteen. And in the first month on the fourteenth day. Of the month that even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. It says seven days, verse 19, shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Verse 20, Ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. It just seemed like they're simple things, but for Israel, for some reason, they just was rebellious. They was hard-headed. <laughs> they just didn't want to do right. They wanted to do it the way they wanted to do it. Any questions? I have a question. Sister Yaina? Yes, ma'am. Shalom, family. This is Katura. After reading that, where does... I don't know, you may not be able to answer this, but a lot of the Hebrews say you can't eat rice, you can't eat pasta. I don't see that there. Well, some of the rice, well, I don't know about the rice having leaven in it, but I know some of the pastas does. Right, I mean, because right. when you think about pasta, pasta is made of what? Wheat. Flour. Flour. It's made of flour. Mm-hmm. So some but of it no, may, is made with flour. Now, I, I can't afford the rich stuff. You know, I'm just flour and water. So I don't know about that exotic stuff. Right, yeah. right. Uh, now I'm talking to Sister Malcolm if she's on the line. Does I'm all here. of the um um the um the uh what's it called have leaven in it? The noodles right, and, right. and the pasta. The, the brown rice I actually checked earlier in the week the, the why well, you eat the organic brown rice but I I'm assuming all of it don't have leaven in it, but I know the organic brown rice don't have no rising agents in it at all. It's just plain brown rice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now what about the go by is what's on the ingredients. You know what's listed on the ingredients. Yeah. Well I know sometimes they lie about that too. 
Well, you can only do the best you can with what they tell you. Now, when it comes to the rising agent in the in the um, in the noodles, what is it? Is there a name? Because I know one of them is called ricin or something. I can't think of them all off the top of my head, but some, a lot of yes, you're right. A lot of the noodles you got to be careful with, but the rice not so much. I haven't seen a rice. Not a real rice, anyway. Now, I don't know about the fake stuff like the rice aroni and stuff like that. But oh, yeah, with the real rice, it it does, right. right, it doesn't have anything in it like that. Um, Sister, I had a lesson in noodles that um, you have to look at the packaging. But most of them is just like the flour and water. Okay. You know, or the wheat and the water or whatever. So it says on the packaging. Okay. So I had one girl tell me, Sister Yaina, you couldn't eat anything fluffy, which means you couldn't even eat popcorn. Now I don't know well, about there, all that. There, I, I came across a bag of popcorn that had leaven in it, and last year some potato chips that had leaven hey, in it. Oh, yeah, Grippo's sure. uh, barbecue has the yeast in them, so you can't eat those. So it's it just, you just have to the, read the back of the package. Right. That's what I was going to say. It depends on who made it and what's in it. You know, you got to just pay attention to what's on the labels, but okay. you can have rice. If it's real rice, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Okay. When in doubt, leave it out. Leave it out. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's the answer right there. When in doubt, leave know. it out. And where you ain't gonna be in no trouble, you know what I mean? So I, I don't, I just think that's a good question. All right, last one for this chapter, verse thirty-nine. It says, and they baked unleavened cakes of dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals, so they didn't even have any food. They had no food. They rushed them up out of there like y'all got to go now. All they had to, they, you know what I'm saying, they baked the leaven and it didn't even, they couldn't even put no yeast in it to prepare it. So they was walking through the wilderness, to, on their way to the wilderness, eating unleavened bread because it wasn't nothing else to eat. <laughs> That's why they was hungry. Mm. No, they got them up out of there quickly. Mm. Any other questions about this unleavened bread thing? Because it's deep when you really understand this thing for real. The most I rushed them out of there, they he fixed it where they got rushed up out of there. They didn't get to pack no lunch. They didn't get to do nothing. They had to take their clothes and go. Mm. You know how we are when we get hungry. Look, kids, too, I'm hungry. Oh, you know it had to be something. Mm. Well, they was eating that unleavened bread. That's all they had. That's critical. <laughs> Since what is the the significance of the leaven? What does the leaven represent? It's supposed to be. It's supposed. Some people say it represents sin. You know, but you know that's that's what they say. That's what they say, according to the script. We'll see what the scripture says, but it's supposed to represent. It's supposed to represent sin. You know, because there, well, there's a new test. There's a new testament scripture that says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You know, so it's supposed to represent sin, but the Most High said, leave it completely out of your for seven days. So it's almost like a purification uh, uh, a festival to give your, you know, to just, uh, to me, it's like a cleansing. You know, yeah. because, and it makes you pay attention to the things that you're eating, which we should do anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, we just can't pick up stuff no more and throw them in the grocery basket. We have to watch what we're eating. And that's that's a whole nother job all by itself. Sister Sanaya, is there anything in the chat? Any questions? No, just basically um, comments okay. and greetings. Okay. That's it so far. All right. And you also with that? 11, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just a commandment and during this time that he wants you to follow because if it was that bad, it would be on the clean, the unclean list, and leaven is not unclean. He would not, say cut it out for seven unclean. days. He would say don't eat it at all. Right, right. It's not unclean. Absolutely. It's not an unclean thing. It's just a, spat, it's a feast that we have to keep. 
All right, here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Here we go, verse 1. It says, Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Most High thy Elohim. For in the month of Abib, the Most High thy Elohim brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Most High thy Elohim of the flock and the herd in the place which the Most High shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou came forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day. When thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life, and there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, neither shall there, there anything of the flesh which thou sacrifice the first day at even remain all night until the morning. Any questions? Well, it looks like three just answered the question why we, need, why we have to eat the leavened bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have back. a question. Yes, ma'am. I got. Have you ever heard that we're not supposed to eat vinegar or anything with vinegar in it? No, I've never heard that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've never heard that. Why would that be? Why would they say that? Because it's fermented, and that causes leavening or something. I don't know. I don't eat vinegar okay. anyway, so I don't really know. Well, you know, when I, I was checking it. my ingredients, I found it in stuff like uh, I used a vegan mayonnaise, and I found it in, like, mayonnaise and salad dressing. Oh, okay, okay. Well, like Brother Donny, I said, when in doubt, leave it out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For seven days. I mean, it's only seven days. When in doubt, leave it out. And verse, she said, verse 3, thou, she said it explains it. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread right. with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Hallelujah. All right, Exodus chapter 13. Here we go. And the Most High spake unto Moshe, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Remember this day. And Moshe said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So all of these feasts are mainly about how the Most High brought us out of our first captivity. As a remembrance, God, by strength of, of hand, the Most High brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. It shall be when the Most High shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Havites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast unto the Most High. And verse 6. Verse 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall be no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be any leaven seen with thee in thy quarters. No, nowhere in your house should you have it. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Most High did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it's, verse 9, And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand, and for a memorial between thy eyes, that the Most High's law may be in thy mouth, for with a strong hand has the Most High brought thee out of Egypt. Verse 10, that thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance 
in his season from year to year. Hallelujah. All right. Any questions? Hey, is this something uh, we have to do? Sister Yarina? Yes, ma'am. Just Shalom. a quick statement. So that means that since we didn't have yeast and everything, we actually went longer than seven days with our bread because we had to do a bread starter, like a sourdough starter. So actually, we went longer. We had to wait to get yeast. Um, I don't know if we didn't have. Well, I mean, you know that I don't know how they came about, how they how they brought, it, how they had it, because it's, it's got to be something that that that's a part of our. Uh, what's the word I want to use? Oh, um, it's got to be something that's a part of the elements for them to even be able to do it in the first place. You talking about the children of Israel when they Hello? were in the wilderness? Yeah, so we had, yeah, we had to, because we had to get rid of all the yeast. So in order right. to even make the bread again, we had to do like a sourdough starter or something. So something. it wasn't like we went immediately back to eating bread. That's true. That's a good point. That's a very good point. How they did it, I have no idea. That's a very good point. That makes a very good point. Anybody else? All right, here we go. Numbers chapter thirty-three. And this is very important. This is very important. We almost done. We don't have a long time. We almost done because I want to give us a chance to kind of discuss this. And this one chapter that we have coming up next is very long, so I want to make sure we get this. Numbers chapter 33, verse 1. It says, These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moshe and Aaron. And Moshe wrote their goings out according to their journey by the command. So Moshe wrote down everything that they did. Watch. And these are their journeys according to their going out. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month. So they, they left during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And on the morrow, after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all Egyptians. So they left. On, on the, this is the day that they actually left Egypt was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why do you say that, Yaina? Because something happened that day. As I began to read this scripture, this, this chapter here, this is going to tell you everything that happened to them during the, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread while they were on their way to Mount Sinai. Here we go. And the Most High spake unto Moshe, saying, this is Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. Now we're verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pitha, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sister, um, Sister Natanya, what is that? Hi, hi, hi. it again. Piha harat. Piha harat. Between Migdal and the sea, over against Bel Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. So now imagine they come out of Egypt. It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All they got is, is unleavened bread that they chewing on. And they coming out. And the Most High said, I want you to encamp right here. This is where I want you to put them. Watch what happens. For Pharaoh, verse 3, will say, will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, in the wilderness, have shut them in. So the Most High is using the children of Israel as bait. He said, I want you to put them right here and don't move them, because when Pharaoh sees their position, he's going to think they're trapped. Watch. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Most High, and they did so. He said, so I'm going to do, I'm put them in a position where they look like they're trapped. I'm going to bring Pharaoh after them because even though he let them go, I'm going to harden his heart, and they're going to come after them thinking they're getting ready to do them in, and, and, and that they know that I'm the one that's going to take care of all this. Watch what happens. This is during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. 
And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? that we have let Israel go from serving us. Uh-oh, look like we're getting ready to repeat that one more again. <laughs> he said, we don't let all these people go. We got nobody to serve us no more. Ain't nobody to take care of my mama no more. Don't know, I ain't got no more to I don't have nobody to do that. Why did we do this? Mm-hmm. I put it in their heart. Why? And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Most High hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. So not only did they let them go, but they took all their stuff with them when they... <laughs> I guess they said, oh, no, we done made a mistake. Why? But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horses. And his army and overtook them in camping by the sea, besides Pithahiroth, before Bel-Zephon. What? And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched back them. So they saw them. They're like, oh, my goodness, they're coming, they're coming. You can imagine what they were saying. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Most High. Now, they don't know this is a plan that y'all got done already. All they do is see the circumstances. That's why you can never look at the circumstances. Because why? Because we know that all things work together for the good of them who love y'all and are called according to his purpose. They didn't know the conversation that Shemot I had with Moshe. They just saw him coming. And all of a sudden, everybody started panicking and getting scared. Watch. Verse 11. And they said unto Moshe, Because there were no graves in Israel, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Really? <laughs> After all they seen and all the Most High has done, they left Egypt with the stink of dead bodies, and then he brought them out rich, and this is the conversation that they had. Watch. Wherefore, has thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Watch. Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Ain't that just like us? Leave us alone. I like BT. I like the way I'm living. I don't want to go no go where. Where are we going? We ain't got nowhere to go. Why do we got to leave here? I'm comfortable. This is just us today. We can guess what y'all? We can ready to do this all over again. What? For it has been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Imagine if, the prophet, imagine if the prophet wasn't there. Oh, my goodness. They wouldn't have went. <laughs> right, verse 13. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear ye not, and stand still. He said, And see the salvation of Yah, which he will show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Oh, so Moshe knew what was going on. They just didn't know. He said, you ain't going to never see these folks no more. It's the last time you're going to see them. So the answer to your question, you know, the answer to the young man's question about the firstborn, he didn't just stop with the firstborn. That was just the first wave of the dead bodies. Mm. He didn't stop with the firstborn. No, watch. He said, first, from verse 14, he said, the most high shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Most High said unto Moshe, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He said, What you coming to me for? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. He said, Don't come to me with that. He said, But lift up thy rod and stretch out, out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the, now this is doing the feast of unleavened bread. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. He said, and I, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And 
I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts and upon his chariots mm-hmm. and upon his horsemen. Verse 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I, the Most High, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots and upon his horses, and the angel of the Most High, Yah, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. So the angel that went be, the angel is before him, and right before he gave him an execute judgment, the angels moved behind them, behind, behind the camp of Israel. Watch what happened. And the pillar of clouds went from before their face and stood behind them. Now, verse 20, it said, And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness to them. So the Most High put, the, put the, the pillar of fire in the back so that they couldn't even see where they was going. <laughs> to protect Israel. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question. What do we have to worry about? We ain't got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so how many days did this take? What time? Uh, uh, it do, I, you know what it was don't it? say was it was day one, day two, it was seven days, but this was during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yeah. This was during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All this was going on. Why? Wow. You know, I was just thinking that. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'll wait. Oh, hold on. I'm going to say, but it gave light by night to these so that one came not near the other all the night. Go ahead, sis. No, I was just wondering, not the Egyptians, uh, all that, uh, they had all their family members dying and everything. I was just wondering what was the time, you know, because you're grieving in one moment and you're getting mad at another. You know, God had changed their hearts. They just, yeah, they they changed their mind from mourning the dead to chasing after the Israelites. Yeah, don't so take long. Just, you wonder, didn't take long at all. No, oh, all they had to, all they had to, one of their women had to do something. You better do something. Now, what are we supposed to do now? We ain't got no way to, we got, I'm not getting ready to do all that. Can you imagine the Egyptian women? I ain't getting ready to clean up. I'm not cooking. Why you do that? Because we ain't got nobody to serve us now. Who going to do it? I'm not. They worried about who going to clean up. They got dead bodies every place. Who going to clean this up? Go get them. We ain't going to do this. You shouldn't have never let them go in the first place. Real talk. It's like, no, I ain't going to be able to do this. No. They got on on their ponies and came after us. Okay? They got my shoes too, all my stuff. Oh, no. You got (laughs) to Oh, my goodness. Here we go, Watts. Verse 21, And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Most High caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Watch 22, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry land. So that whole night, a strong wind all that night and made the sea dry land which the waters were divided. Watch. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon, on, upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto, upon, unto them on their right hand and on their left. So guess what? When Cecil B. DeMille made that movie of the Ten Commandments and that, that water was up there like a wall, that was real talk. That was real. They walked through that on dry, dry land, and the water was up like a wall. Do you know that wasn't nobody but the Most High God? That is yeah. correct. That had to be powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On the right hand, and on they probably was they couldn't get through the water for looking at the wall. I'm like, how did he do this? Because <laughs> I would have been like, how did you? And guess what? The fish still swimming in the water. They just on the wall. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> nobody could do that. Ain't nobody but y'all can do that. Nobody. That's the God we serve. And we got to be scared of who now? Nobody. Yeah, nobody can do that. He going take care of us. <laughs> Why? He said, verse 23, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. 
heart. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Most High looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of Egypt. So the Most High saw him. Watch. He said, watch. And he said, he said, took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Most High fighted for them against the Egyptians. He uh -oh. took the wheels off their chariots. <laughs> so they couldn't get through the mud. They couldn't drive through the mud. <laughs> Woo! And they said, oh, we messed up. We need to. When they, they had came to themselves and said, we made a mistake. It was too late by then. They was already in the sea. Mm -hmm. It was already in there. When he finally released their mind and let them think on their own, they said, oh, we got to get out of here. What? And the Most High said unto Moshe, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moshe stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it. And the Most High overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the, the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. <clears throat> but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the wood. That's another part of it. Hold on. Let me get back to where we is. And the Most High saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. All dead on the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Most High did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Most High and believed the Most High and his servant Moshe. That's the fire. <laughs> <laughs> they saw the dead bodies wash up into the water. He said not one of them was saved. Not one of them was one of them could go back. So not only did he kill the firstborn, but he killed the soldiers and and Pharaoh and all of them. They all died that day. That's why. That's why Sister Yai and I say that that Egypt was just set up for us to emerge out as a nation because after they after they uh, 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 after all of this happened Egypt mm -hmm. never rose up to be any never kind can. of power mm -hmm. under any power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what do we have to worry about again we ain't got nothing to worry about y'all got us but you, can I say something? Yes, you know, ma'am. Yes, you know, it, it, the Israelites seen this, this miraculous miracle by the hand of y'all. They seen all this, and they were all in a maze, you know. But mm -hmm. how long did it take after this <laughs> that they went right back into their sin again, right back to the rebellious, right back to doing things? And, you know, how soon can you forget? Absolutely. Happens to us today. We know the most I can deliver us out of one thing, and, and then something did. else comes up that seems like it's just un, it's unbelievable, and un, he's unable to do it. And we have to remind ourselves that there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing that he can't. I don't care how many systems it is, and who's in charge of what, and what they what they threaten you with. If he says it's so, it's so. It's so. That's right. It's nothing that he can't do. But with each test, we have to realize that in our own heart and be persuaded in our own mind that he can do anything but fail. Anything. But wouldn't they have a fear for him, a reverence, a respect for you him? You high, But they have no respect because they keep no going respect. right back to sin, doing the same thing. Same thing. Yep. No because respect. they was inconvenienced. They didn't want to be inconvenienced. They wanted it all right there, right there for them. They didn't want to have to work for nothing. They didn't want to be tried. They didn't want their faith tried. They didn't want to have to go through anything. They wanted him to hand it to them. Here you go. You have everything you need. All you got to do is just do right. I, I, I got it right here for you. But the moment he put them to the test, the moment he, he wanted to see whether they really trusted him or not, that's when they started cutting up. 
And see, trust and faith have to run together. It can't run separate. You can't have one without the other. You got to have it both. And even with this, they didn't know what the conversation that him and Moshe had had. They didn't know that they were there was a part of a plan. They didn't see it. But so, but guess what? Just because you're not in the memo and he don't he don't put you in the loop, it doesn't mean that you have a right to speak on it. Some things you just have to be quiet. But do you think because, you know, that said, they've been uh, slaves in Egypt for so many years and they had no voices, they had no rights, and they never, you know, could stand up for themselves. And so that one time now, okay, we are out of the captivity and away from our enemies. Now we want some power and some voice, you know. So they going, <laughs> instead of them now, we no longer slaves. So let us make him our slave, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, but they, they want to go back to Egypt. They wanted yeah. to go back. Yeah. They said, you should have left us alone. Let us go back. Some people don't want change. They don't want to be able to say, I don't change. have to They lost because they don't know nothing else. Yeah. That's all they knew. Yeah. That's all we know is this. We don't know nothing else. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know. We, we haven't seen him. Show out like he showed up. He's done things for us that's been miraculous. Don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about show up and really show out. We haven't seen it. He said that he said you ain't gonna remember Egypt. Remember him for Egypt. You gonna remember him for these folk uh, 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 bringing us out of the four corners of the earth. Right. That's right. He gonna show up and show out. <laughs> you think he showed up then? You watch this time. <laughs> but you know that that what, what the Most High y'all is, is probably saying. You know, you can have your say, but you won't have your way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. You better say that again. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take us to the same test. We're gonna go through the same test all over again. You know, that's why I said everybody count the cost. You know, think about what you're talking about because you're leaving. You know, it ain't gonna be easy. They ain't have no food. At least this time he goes. He said the boat's gonna bring everything we need, food and raiment. That's correct. They messed with their pots and pans and stuff. You know they they was able to bring some stuff with them when they left. We ain't leaving with nothing. Everything gonna stay behind. You know because he said he's gonna get us from the clefts of the rocks, the caves of the rocks, and from the uh, uh, from the bushes and all of that stuff. Man, we ain't gonna have nothing. This place is going to be tore up from the floor. Well, yeah. <laughs> wow. This being a capitalistic society, do you think that there will be opposition and plagues before we leave to prevent us from leaving? I think. Uh, that's a good question. It's a possibility. I mean, Revelation talks about the same plagues. You know, I hope it ain't, I hope it's before we, I mean, after we leave, but if we, if we have to see it, we have to see it, you know. You, you know, you just gotta steady yourself. That's why you have to make your, your, your election, your foundation and your election sure, you know, so that you will be steady about, you know, like, a, 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 and, and not be able to be moved. A tree that's planted by the rivers of water and not be moved, regardless to what you see. You know, because we're going to be put to the same path. And we're going to go through the same thing. And we've been here a long time. All we know is weave and hair glue and eyelashes and breast implants and butt implants and music and jigabooing and dancing and partying and education and degrees and jobs and houses. and car- That's all we know. Mm-hmm. And church. We know church. That's all we know. And that has become good enough for us. But the most high can really shake up the foundation. He's shaking the whole foundation up. He's moving you out of your comfort zone. He can really move you into unfamiliar territory and tell you to keep your mouth shut because you wasn't included in the memo. But it don't mean that you, you have a right to say something. Because he's going to provide for us. We're going. People don't understand this. It's going to be a very difficult time. But all this happened within the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All of it. So while they was hungry, they was watching the miraculous. 
And by the time they got out of it and got across the uh, across the sea, they started grumbling. We hungry. Ain't no, we ain't got no food. You done brought us out here to die. We ain't got no food. They didn't care nothing about no sea, no dry land, no nothing. They wanted something to eat. <laughs> but they weren't talking about no food when they was going through all that. I bet they was. Oh, they was okay. no they food. wasn't thinking. About <laughs> they weren't thinking about no food. It wasn't oh. at that time. They were trying so bad. <laughs> water standing up. Moses yeah. water. Yeah. Nah, yeah. they were. Right. But you know, it's so amazing. Like I said, you know, when you're going through something, you know, you know, you 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 at peace, you at still, you know, you're free, but you. Uh, yeah, you you had still at a place. But the mother when he delivered you out of it and then all of a sudden now, okay, I'm safe and okay. That's when you all go back complaining and groaning yep. and moaning about everything, you know? Yes, it is. No question about it at all whatsoever. That's how we are as a people. Because we're used to having things at our fingertips. We yes, used to being able to go to Kroger's and go shopping. Ain't gonna be no more of that. Ain't gonna be no more. He gonna bring it to you. Ain't gonna be no more of that. He gonna provide. He knows where you were and what you was used to do. He knows how you used to get your food and what you used to do. So he gonna make it. You know, he gonna make it where we'll be able to still eat and do the things and have the things that we need. But we gotta 